Hello everyone and welcome to 2023 CompTIA A plus practice exam questions, 40 real exam questions with right answers explained. This is core one, let's get started. First question, no input signal detected. That's the error message a technician receives after powers on his PC and its monitor. The display lights are on. Which of the following is a possible solution? A. Changing the connector setting on the monitor. B. Upgrading the monitor firmware. C. Updating the PC's operating system. D. Replacing the monitor cable. And E. Checking the power plug on the monitor. And the right answer here is A. Changing the connector setting on the monitor. Explanation, as you can see, there is a picture here. Sometimes you need to change the input-output configuration. The error message, no input signal detected, is a typically an indication that the monitor is not receiving a signal from the computer. There could be several causes for this, but one possible solution is to change the connector setting on the monitor. For example, the monitor may be set to receive a signal from the wrong input source, such as a different computer or device or the connector setting may be incorrect. Changing the connector setting to the correct input source or adjusting the settings could resolve the issue. Question number two. As a technician, you have been tasked to replace DDR5 SDRAM memory. What type of packaging is used for DDR5 SDRAM? And we have five possible answers. We have A. 184 pins, B, 240 pins, C, 288 pins, D, 290 pins, or E, 298 pins. And the right answer is 288 pins. As you can see on the explanation table here, we have DDR, which has 148 pins, we have DDR2 and DDR3, which they have the same 240 pins. And the newest DDR5 and DDR4, they have the same amount of pins, 288. Here we are talking about a PC, not a laptop. If it is a laptop, it will be about so dim and the pins are different. On this picture, as you can see, there is a module key on the DDR4 here and on the DDR5 it's around in the middle and that is a, a difference as well so but in this question it is all about the pins and CompTIA exams they are focusing on the pin numbers of SODIM and also on DIM. Question number three. What type of cable would you be the most cost-effective solution for resolving electromagnetic interference issues without sacrificing network performance in an office setting? We have five possible answers. Shield, CAT6, unshielded CAT5, Plenum, MMF, Coaxial. The right answer here is shielded CAT6. Shielded CAT6 cable has a higher level of shielding compared to standard CAT5e, which helps to reduce EMI and maintain signal integrity. Shielded CAT6 cable is also more cost-effective compared to using multi-mode fiber, which is typically more expensive. As you can see, UTP, it is unshielded twisted pair, and STP stands for shielded twisted pair. Question number four. A user claims that the projector has video but no audio as they try to utilize it to the present in a conference room. Which of the following options will fix the problem most likely? So here we have a problem with the projector. There is no audio but there is a video. Again, five possible answers. A. Changing the outputs to VGA. B. Changing the bulb. C. Utilizing an HDMI connection. D. Changing the input to DVIA. E. Increasing the volume from the PC settings. Right answer. Utilizing an HDMI connection. 
HDMI connection contains video and audio capabilities, therefore utilizing it will most likely fix the issue. Question 5. Which computer operation runs a boot-up check on every component? BIOS, CMOS, POST, UEFI, TPM. The right answer here is POST, P-O-S-T, stands for Power on Self Test Performs, a self-check on the computer system during boot to determine if hardware is working as expected. Question 6. You need to install a new video card into a desktop computer. To which type of technology would you install a by 16 card? To a USB, to a PCIe, to a DIMM, to a DVI or to a Thunderbolt? And of course here the right answer is to a PCIe Express. PCIe Express Expansion slots accept by 1, by 4, by 8, by 16 cards, and by 16 slot consists of 16 lanes for a total bidirectional through output of 16 gigabits. PCIe standards currently come in five different generations: PCIe 1 version 1, PCIe version 2, PCIe version 3, PCIe. Four and PCIe 5 bandwidth doubles with each generation. As you can see on the table below, there is the bandwidth of each version, the transfer speed, the frequencies. Up here, as you can see, you can see each lanes and pins and their length of each PCIe slot. These are important, so I suggest you try to memorize them. Question 7. After security measures at the entry of the building were strengthened last week, a user was unable to enter. Users may now use their mobile devices for authentication thanks to the company's implementation of the 13.56 MHz frequency short band. For the mobile device to authenticate, which of the following must be enabled? Alright. ER. IR, Bluetooth, 5G, NFC, Biometrics. And of course, you need to enable on your device, mobile device, NFC. Near field communication operates in a frequency range centered on 13.56 MHz and offers a data transmission rate up to 424 kilobits within approximately 10 centimeters. Question 8. Which of the following cloud concepts enables clients to receive scalable services? Rapid elasticity, resource pooling, measured services, high availability or on-demand self-services. Just something to say guys, I'm sure you're going to meet this type of question on your CompTIA Plus exam, so I suggest you please try to memorize them and learn them each cloud uh, each cloud service and what they do and how they are used okay let's see the right answer here is rapid elasticity rapid elasticity is the ability of a cloud computing system to quickly adjust the amount of resources such as computing power and storage it provides in response to changes in demand allowing for more efficient use of resources and cost savings Question number 9. A new BIOS UEFI update is available and you would, would you and you would like to do the upgrade. What is the most helpful when flashing the UEFI on a computer system using USB flash? So what is the most helpful thing when you do the update of the BIOS? Fast USB port, UPS, Ethernet, rate or interrupted internet? The right answer here is UPS. Since losing power during this process can be anything from inconvenience to disastrous, UPS is by far the most useful solution. Of 
Of course it is. If you lose the power, it will crush. Question number 10. Which of the following standards supports MIMO technology? A. 802.11G 802.11A 802.11B or 802.11N or none of the above? Right answer is 802.11N. Excuse me, guys. 802.11N standard supports MIMO multiple in, multiple out and was published in 2009. It supports speeds up to 600 megabits per second. 802.11 AC and AX Wi-Fi 5 and 6 supports MUMIMO. That's not in the question. Question 11. Which motherboard component can most likely be used to return a computer to a state that will allow booting the system without knowing the boot password or access to the BIOS utility when the computer has been locked by a by dissatisfied ex-employee? Dissatisfied ex-employee. Pardon me. We have five possible answers. A. Jumper. B. Toggle switch. C. South bridge. D. CPU socket E. Random access memory. Right answer is jumper. Jumpers are small connectors on a motherboard that are used to configure the settings for certain components or features of the computer. They allow the user to change the behavior of the system by shorting two pins together to change the voltage or signal going to a particular component. Some common uses of jumpers include setting the CPU clock speed, configuring the system for single or dual channel memory, and clearing the BIOS settings. However, the use of jumpers vary among different motherboards, and the user should consult the motherboard manual for specific instructions. You have been tasked to replace a Dell's laptop motherboard. What type of motherboard should you replace it with? Five possible answers A. ATX B. Micro ATX C. Mini ITX D. AT E1 for the specific model. The right answer is 1 for the specific model. Laptop motherboards are typically tailored to fit the specific case. When replacing a failed board, it's crucial to obtain a motherboard that will fit. The size of the old one and the new one, the new board must be the same. Question 13. What is the component that enables the touchscreen on a mobile device to receive input? Inverter, backlight, digitizer, controller. Right answer, digitizer. A digitizer is a component of a touchscreen that converts the physical touch of a user into a digital signal that can be interpreted by device's processor. Question 14. What term describes the ability to only pay for the resources used in a cloud computing service? Measured service, high availability, resource pooling, on-demand self-service or rapid elasticity. Again, we have this question. Like I said, it's important to know uh, the cloud services. And the right answer is measured service. Measured service is a feature of cloud computing that allows for the monitoring, control and the reporting of the usage of resources. This enables the ability to pay for resources based on usage and optimize costs. This feature allows for metering and charging for the usage of cloud resources such as storage, computing and network bandwidth on a pay per pay, pay per pay use basis. This means that customers are only built for the resources they consume rather than having to invest in and maintain dedicated infrastructure. 
This also helps customers to keep track of their usage and costs, allowing them to make better informed decisions about their resource usage. Question 15. Which of the following is a common type of failure in a laptop hard drive? DIM failure, SMART failure, RAID failure or BIOS failure? Right answer, SMART failure. Explanation Self-monitoring, analysis and reporting technology is a feature built into most modern hard drives that allows the drive to monitor its own health and predict potential failures. Smart failure occurs when the hard drive's smart system detects a problem with the drive, such as bad sectors, high temperature or mechanical failure. When a smart failure occurs, the hard drive will typically display an error message or generate an alert to notify the user of the issue. In some cases, the hard drive may continue to function normally, but the smart failure indicates that the drive is nearing the end of its useful life and may fail soon. It is important to back up data and replace the hard drive as soon as possible when smart failure is detected to avoid data loss. What is the part of a printer that holds and transfers toner or ink onto paper? Another important subject printers? Print head, fusure, drum or roller? The right answer is drum. The drum in a laser printer is a cylindrical component that plays a crucial role in the printing process. Its main purpose is to transfer the toner from the, from the toner cartridge into the paper to create the printed image. It is coated with a photoconductive material that is sensitive to light. The laser beam directed onto the drum creates a static charge on the photoconductive surface which attracts the toner particles and transfers them onto the paper. The drum is a crucial component of the laser printing process and must be replaced periodically to ensure optimal print quality and maintain the integrity of the printed image. Question 17. In an office setting, you have been asked to set up a new laser printer to print on both sides of the paper. How would you accomplish this task? You install the most recent firmware upgrade available for that specific printer. You will manually flip the paper over and feed it back through the printer for the second side to be printed on. You will configure dupli duplex settings or use a duplex printing accessory that automatically prints on both sides. Or you will print the first side and then use a copy machine to print on the other side. And of course, the right answer is configuring duplex settings. In a professional office setting, the most efficient and cost effective way to set up a laser printer to print on both sides of the paper is by using a duplex printing accessory. This accessory is designed to automatically print on both sides of the paper, eliminating the need for manual flipping or using a separate machine. The duplex printing accessory can be purchased as an add-on to the printer or it can be built in with the printer, thus selecting option A and B are not the best solution. Question 18. In a RAID 5 configuration, what is the minimum number of hard drives required to provide data redundancy and fault tolerance? 2. Hard drives. Three. 4 or 5? And the right answer is 3. RAID 5 requires a minimum of 3 hard drives to provide data redundancy and fault tolerance. The RAID 5 configuration uses data stripping, distributing data across multiple drives in combination with an additional drive that stores parity information. This allows for data recovery in the event of a single drive failure as the parity information can be used to rebuild the lost data. With only two hard drives, it's not possible to have any redundancy or fault tolerance as there is no drive to store parity information. 
More than three hard drives can be used in a RAID 5 configuration, but the minimum number required is three. Question 90. What is the main purpose of a firmware update on a mobile device? A. To improve battery life. B. To increase storage capacity. C. To fix bugs and security vulnerabilities. D. To enhance performance. Right answer is C. To fix bugs and security vulnerabilities. A firmware update on a mobile device is designed to fix bugs and security vulnerabilities that have been discovered in the current firmware version. These updates can also improve the overall performance of the device by addressing issues such as low performance, connectivity problems and other software related issues. Additionally, firmware updates often include new features, functionality and improvements to the device operating system. While a firmware update may also improve battery life, it is not the primary purpose of the update. Upgrades to storage capacity and performance enhancement are not typically done through firmware updates, but rather through hardware upgrades or cloud services. Question 20. What type of the connector is commonly used to connect a hard drive to the motherboard of a desktop computer? A. SATA B. Pata C. Skizi D. IDE Right answer is SATA. Serial Advanced Technology Attachment is the most common type of connector used to connect a hard drive to the motherboard of a desktop computer. SATA uses a serial signaling technology and a smaller, more efficient connector than Pata, which is an older technology. Small computer system interface, SCSI and IDI integrated drive electronics are older technologies that were commonly used in the past, but now have been largely replaced by SATA in most new computers. Question 21. What is the purpose of a BIOS, basic input-output system in a computer? To manage system resources and provide an interface for the operating system. B. To manage the power management of the computer. C. To provide a graphical user interface for the computer. Or D. To perform diagnostic tests on the computer's hardware. And the right answer here is A. To manage system resources and provide an interface for the operating system. A BIOS is firmware that resides on a chip on the motherboard of a computer. Its primary function is to manage system resources such as the CPU, memory and peripheral devices and provide an interface for the operating system to communicate with the hardware. The BIOS also controls the boot process, performing a power on self test post, to ensure that all hardware is present and functional and then loading the operating system from the boot device. Power management is a feature that can be configured in the BIOS, but it's not the main purpose of it. The BIOS doesn't provide a graphical user interface and it's not a diagnostic tool. Question 22. A user reports that their computer is running slow and freezing frequently. As a technician, what would be your first step in troubleshooting the issue. A. Run a malware scan. B. Check the available free space on the hard drive. C. Check the computer's event viewer logs. Or D. Update the computer's operating system. Right answer here is check the available free space on the hard drive. Slow performance and freezing can be caused by a variety of issues, but one common cause is a lack of free space on the hard drive. When a hard drive is full, the computer has to work harder to access and store files, which can slow down overall performance. The first step in troubleshooting this issue should be to check the available free space on the hard drive and remove any unnecessary files or programs. Question 23. 
What should a user verify is present on their PC before purchasing an NVMe hard drive as an upgrade? What should you have on your PC before you buying that hard drive? So DIMM, SATA, Jumper, M.2, Skizzy. And of course the right answer here is M.2. Before purchasing an NVMe drive, the user should confirm that the PC has an available M.2 interface. NVMe drives are designed to use the non-volatile Memory Express protocol, which is optimized for high-speed storage communication. NVMe drives are typically installed in an M.2 interface on the motherboard, so it's important to confirm that the PC has this type of interface available. Question 24. What is the most probable cause of a hard drive error message on a laptop even after a successful file system check and all files being accessible? Virus infection, smart status failure, RAID failure or DIMM failure? And we have the right answer, smart status failure. This is self-monitoring, analysis and reporting technology. It is a feature in hard drives that monitors the drive's performance and predicts potential failures. When a hard drive is experiencing issues that may lead to a failure, it will usually report a smart status failure, which can be viewed in the PC's BIOS or through software utilities. If a file system check shows that the files are accessible and the file system is clean, but the PC still issues a hard drive error message, it's most likely that the hard drive is reporting a smart status failure. Question 25. A technician is troubleshooting what appears to be a RAM issue on a PC. Which of the following symptoms would indicate if this is a RAM issue? A. Wrong BIOS time. B. Distended capacitors. C. Post called beeps. Or D. Continuous reboots. Right answer here is D. Continuous reboots. Continuous reboots is one of the most common symptoms of a RAM issue. When a computer's RAM is faulty or not functional, functioning properly, the operating system may become unstable and the computer may crash or restart frequently, leading to a continuous reboot. This can occur because the RAM stores data temporarily for the process to access and when the RAM is not functioning properly, the processor may not be able to access the necessary data to continue it running. This can lead to crashes or freezes, which, it, which in turn can cause the computer to restart. Question 26. Which of the following units is used to measure TDP? A. Amps B. Volts C. Watts D. Ohms And the right answer is C. Watts. Thermal Design Power TDP is a measure of the maximum power a computer's cooling system needs to remove to keep the computer working properly and prevent overheating. It is measured in units of power, specifically in watts. A watt is a unit of power that tells you how much energy is being used per second. So TDP is basically a measure of the highest amount of energy a computer's cooling system must handle to keep the computer working smoothly. Question 27. Which of the following storage devices loses its contents when you shut down the computer? Hard disk, HDDD, SSD, RAM or USB? And of course the right answer is RAM. Random access memory is a type of computer memory that is used to store data temporarily for a quick access and processing by the CPU. Unlike permanent storage devices such as hard drives or flash drives, the contents of RAM are lost when the power is turned off or the computer is shut down. This is because RAM is volatile memory, meaning it requires a constant power source to maintain its content. The purpose of RAM is to provide the CPU with quick access to frequently used data and applications, allowing the computer to run smoothly and efficiently. 
Question 28. Which of the following is a type of printer that uses heat to transfer ink onto the paper? We have a different type of printers here. Dot matrix, laser, thermo, inkjet. And of course this is thermo printer. Because it uses heat to transfer ink onto paper. It works by using a thermo print head to heat up special heat sensitive paper. The heat causes a chemical reaction in the ink that makes it turn into a solid form which creates a printed image on the paper. This type of printer is commonly used in point of sale POS systems, barcode printing and other applications where speed and reliability are important. Unlike inkjet or laser printers, thermal printers do not require ink cartridges, toner or ribbons making them a cost-effective and low-maintenance option for certain printing needs. Question 29. What part of a printer is most likely to cause smudged printing? Again, guys, it's very important to know the printer's issues and how to troubleshoot them, especially the print outputs, what can cause them. In this case, we have smudged printing. What part of the printer is most likely to cause smudged printing? A. Rollers, lo rollers B. Print head C. Ink cartridges or D. Paper tray Right answer, rollers. Printers use a series of rollers to transport paper through the printing process. These rollers are responsible for feeding the paper into the printer aligning it correctly and holding it in place while the print head applies ink to the page. If the rollers become dirty or worn, they can cause smudges on the paper. Dirt and debris can accumulate on the rollers over time, leading to smears and smudges on the printed pages. Additionally, if the rollers are not properly lubricated, they can start to wear down and create friction, which can also cause smudging. To prevent smudging, it is important to regularly clean and maintain the rollers, rollers in your printer to ensure that they are working properly and free of dirt and debris. Question 31. Which of the following is not a typical print configuration setting on printers or multifunctional devices? We have five possible answers. A. Number of copies, P, B, page orientation, C, paper size, D, collating, or E, choosing a cover page. And of course, choosing a cover page is not a typical print setting that you can find on a printer's. Choosing a cover page is not a typical print configuration setting for a printer or multifunction device because it is typically a feature of the software application that is used to create and print the document. For example, when creating a document in Microsoft Word, you may have the option to add a cover page as the first page of your document. However, this is not a setting that is specific to the printer or multifunctional device and is instead determined by the software application being used to create the document. Question 32. Your computer has been experiencing frequent stop errors and is automatically rebooting each time. You want to change the configuration setting to stop this from happening. Where would you go to make this change? A. You would go to BIOS, Boot tab, then Automatic Reboot. B. System Properties, Advanced tab, Startup and Recovery. C. Control Panel, Device Manager and then System Configuration. User Accounts, Advanced User Accounts and then System Configuration. Where would you go to make this change? And you would go to, you'd go to System Properties, Advanced tab, Startup and Recovery. This option allows you to access the startup and the recovery settings and make changes to the configuration to prevent the system from automatically rebooting in the event of a stop error. Question 33. 
Computers on a network cannot establish an internet connection, but they can connect to each other. You determine that on each computer an APIPA APIPA address has been assigned. Where do you look next to resolve the problem? You would look to the DNS server or to the proxy server or you will look on the DHCP server or to the FTP server. Of course, the right answer here is DHCP server. The right answer is DHCP server because the dynamic host configuration protocol server is responsible for assigning IP addresses to devices on a network. If the DHCP server is not functioning properly, the devices on the network will not receive valid IP addresses and they will instead be assigned automatic private IP addressing addresses and this can result in the devices being unable to connect to the internet because they do not have valid IP addresses but able to connect to each other. Question 34. You have been tasked with setting up a specialized computer for video editing. Which of the following should you include with the computer? NIC, NAS, SSD or HDDD? And of course the right answer here is SSD. States for solid state drives, they are right answer for video editing computer because they are faster, they are faster than hard disk, they have faster read and write speeds compared to traditional hard disk. In a video editing setup you need fast storage to handle the high speed transfer of large video files as well as to improve overall system performance and reduce lag and waiting times. SSDs are more reliable, durable and consume less power compared to hard disks, which makes them more suitable for video editing. Question 35. An unexpected clicking noise occurs every time the video editing program is started. The case fans have been replaced, but the noise remains. Diagnostics have also been run on the video card and it appears to be operating normally. What action should you take first? You should perform a backup, replace the storage drive, update the drive or perform system restore. The right answer is perform a backup. The unexpected clicking noise could indicate a problem with the hard drive, such as failing disk or a disk that has bad sectors which could cause performance issues and data loss. Before replacing the hard drive, it is recommended to perform a full data backup to ensure the data is safe. Question 36. When running cable through drop ceilings, which type of cable is best option? CAT5E, CAT6A, Plenum or Fiverr? Know your cables guys, they're important. And that's the Plenum. This, is, uh, all, this cable is often considered the best option for running through ceilings because it is fire resistant and has low smoke emitting properties. This type of cable is designed to meet specific safety standards and it's required by building codes in many areas for use in air handling spaces such as plenums, ducts and other spaces used for environmental air handling. The use of plenum cable helps to minimize the spread of fire and smoke in the event of a fire, providing additional safety for building occupants. Question 37. You need to attach an RJ45 plug to the end of a twisted pair cable. Which tool should you use? Cable tester, B crimper, C multimeter, or D tone and probe kit? Right answer is B crimper, of course. This is how the crimper looks like. A crimper is the tool you, will, you would use to attach an RJ45 plug to the end of a twisted pair cable because it is designed to compress and secure the connector onto the cable. 
The crimper is used to apply pressure to the connector and the wires within the cable which creates a physical and electrical connection. This connection ensures that the data transmitted over the cable is secure and free from interference. The crimper tool is specifically designed to work with the RJ45 connector and it is essential for creating a reliable and long-lasting connection. Question 38. A client approaches you with a problem. They have noticing vertical streaks on every page they print from the laser printer in their department. What could be the cause of this issue? Out of date printer driver or clogged paper tray or might be overheated printer fuser unit or damaging to the imaging drum. And the right answer here is damaging to the imaging drum. The imaging drum is a critical component of a laser printer that is responsible for transferring the toner onto the paper. If the imaging drum is damaged, it can cause vertical streaks to, the, streaks to appear on every page that is printed. The streaks are a result of the toner not being evenly distributed on the paper, which is usually caused by scratches, dents or other types of damage to the surface of the drum. Repairing or replacing the damaged imaging drum is typically necessary to resolve this issue and restore proper printing quality. Question 39. Which of the following print tools is used to manage and maintain print jobs? So we, here we have four options. We have print head, print spooler, acrobat reader, paper feed, rollers. So which of these maintain print jobs, managing and maintaining the printing jobs? And of course, that's the print spooler. The print spooler is used to manage and maintain print jobs because it acts as a buffer between the computer and the printer. The spooler holds the print job in memory until the printer is ready to process it, which helps to ensure that the print job is executed in the correct order and without any interruptions. The print spooler also keeps track of the status of each print job and provides feedback to the computer such as when the print job is complete or if there are any errors. In addition, the spooler can be used to pause, resume or cancel print jobs allowing for greater control and management of the printing process. Overall, the print spooler is an essential tool to ensuring that print jobs are executed efficiently and without any problems. Last question for today's exam practice. Question 40. Your system has begun shutting down suddenly and unexpectedly. How can you determine if the cause of your issue is due to CPU overheating? How could you do that? By checking the CPU temperature in the, in the system BIOS firmware, or by checking the CPU documentation for normal temperatures, or you have to check the CPU temperature in computer management, or check the CPU temperatures in the task manager. The right answer here is check the CPU temperature in the system BIOS firmware. The BIOS firmware is responsible for low-level system operations, including monitoring the temperature of the CPU. When the CPU temperature reaches a certain threshold, the BIOS firmware can trigger a system shutdown to prevent damage to the CPU and other components. By checking the CPU temperature in the BIOS UFI firmware, you can determine if the cause of the unexpected shutdowns is due to overheating and take appropriate actions such as cleaning the interior of your computer, improving airflow or replacing thermal paste. That's it guys for today. Thank you for watching. I'll be making more practice exam questions, more simulations for CompTIA A+, Network Plus, so please do subscribe. I appreciate you if you click the like button because these videos, they take time and I will appreciate your support by subscribing, liking the video or and posting a comment. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.